Well, 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 what's good, guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. Thank you for joining me. Today is a beautiful day. Yesterday, the Nikon Z8 was finally announced. No longer rumored. We know what the Z8 looks like, what it's going to be, and when it's coming out, and when it will be available. Now, before I get into it, online, there's a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking going on. You know, I told you this and that. I predicted this camera. You know, I was right all along. A lot of guys online, on the rumor sites, on the chat forums, and on YouTube, doing a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking. Okay, guys? I'm about to play you a video this was captured almost two years ago, August 14th of 2021. I was asked on a podcast what I think a Nikon Z8 should look like. Now, this is before or right around the same time the Z9 was going to be released, right? I was asked on a podcast on Frames TM. Roll it, roll the tape. Let me show you some proof here. Okay, so I guess uh, you want us to talk about if there was a Z8, what yes. I would like for that camera to have? Yeah. Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, if there was a Z8, right? Uh, I would want it to be a Z9, but half the price without a grip. Sum it up, exactly the same engine. I mean, yeah, I want 4K 120. Uh, I don't know, that crazy Z9 is doing like 120. I don't know, the other day I was reading yeah. something. Yeah, I want that. I want a Z9 that's half the price without a grip. Okay. It's a long time ago, guys. Almost two years ago, I think I was pretty spot on from my prediction and what a Z8 should look like. Like I said, a lot of guys are flexing their Nostradamus muscle online. I said, you know what? Let me show you some proof. Not to toot my own horn, but hey, it's on tape, August of 2021. Before I tell you what I think of the Z8, and now that it's officially, officially here, by the way, congratulations to Nikon. Congratulations to our Nikonian community. We're getting an awesome camera. I couldn't be more excited for the community, for the brand, and for photographers out there because this is really an amazing camera option for you guys. But before I get into it, guys, let, let me just tell you, I got some awesome guests lined up for Vahography Talk Live. This coming Tuesday, we have Lee and Raymond, a.k.a. The Snap Chick. They'll be live on Vahography Talk, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The following week, I have the camera store, Evelyn and Dave. They'll be on Vahography Talk. And I'm talking with the Nikon Z8 All-Star, you know, from Nikon USA photographer Dixie Dixon. Hopefully we'll get her on. We'll talk to her live as well. I'll open it up for you guys to talk to them. All right, guys. So the Nikon Z8, what do I think? Well, what I thought two years ago, I think the Z8 should be a Z9. Nikon Z8 is the Z9 with some subtle differences. Now, the obvious differences are the optional uh, vertical grip. I'm going to get the Z8, but it's not going to be with the vertical grip only because I have a Z9 and that suits my vertical grip needs perfectly. I honestly don't know how I feel about the vertical grip. I saw pictures of it attached on a Z8. The size of the camera drastically changes. It's higher than a Z9 and it's just more bulkier. I think I'm okay with carrying around a few ENEL 15 batteries and just swapping out the batteries when I need to and to, to keep the camera lighter and smaller now i'm very happy with the z8's body it's a little bigger and more robust than the z6 z7 line and it's smaller than the z9 obviously i think it's perfect i think it's perfect it's it's everything i've asked for actually let's not forget how amazing the z9 is okay we, we sometimes forget there's a lot of complaints online well they didn't really change anything there's a few youtube channels out a few YouTube videos out this morning, one guy complaining about it's the same camera. Well, yeah, duh, it's the same camera, but it's an awesome camera. The Z9 is top of the line, state of the art. We sometimes forget, oh, the Z9 has this, the Z9 has that. Well, there's nothing really new on the Z8. I'm not that excited. Really, guys? Really? For Nikon to come out with a camera that's identical to the Z8 to Z9 with a smaller package and a less expensive package, this opens the door for many photographers and videographers. The Z8 is heavily centered on video 
capabilities, okay? I think it's the best hybrid camera. Now you could argue, you can argue with me on this and please do so in the comments below, let me know. But again, there are subtle differences. The other difference is the car door. The car door uh, is not like a Z9. It's almost like the Z6, Z7. I don't have a problem with the way the car door opens and closes on a Z6. I've never had an issue with the car door opening up. I mean, it, it all depends on how you hold the camera, but I never had an issue. I'm fine with that. There's also a few other features that I saw on the Z8 that's not included in a Z9 right now. Maybe a firmware update might change that. Skin softening software. I think I'm interested to see how that looks like because when doing portraits and and how that will work, how the, I guess they call it deep thinking AI, how the engine will work in distinguishing skin and not to get in the way of, let's say the hair or the background blur. Will it do a good job softening the skin right in camera? Excited to check that out, guys. Two USB-C, this is great. One to charge the battery internally and one for uh, USB-C connection, $4,000 plus tax USD. I would have liked to see it at about 3,500 plus tax, but hey, we can't get everything we want, right? I'll be honest with you guys, I am a little burned out. Yesterday was a Z8 day. I was uh, part of a few live streams. Yesterday was an all day thing. And I'm just, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad we can finally move on. And now we know what the Nikon Z8 is. We can celebrate. Now, another complaint I've been hearing online a lot yesterday and today was the screen. Now, we're back to the screen discussion. Do I care that the Z8 doesn't flip all the way around so you could see yourself? I don't care. That doesn't really bother me. If I really wanted to compose a shot where I wanted to see the screen, I would add a monitor or I would use SnapBridge. You can actually see the composition on your iPhone. It's an easy fix and it's an easy go around. Having a flippy screen, does that compromise the construction and the weather ceiling of what a Z9 actually is? You just never know. Maybe it wasn't possible. Like the Z30, the Nikon Z30, we will see flippy screens on less expensive consumer cameras. I'm totally fine with the Z8 not having a flippy screen. I think the Z9 screen is good enough for me. I think it does a hell of a job. And again, the quality of the Z9 screen compared to the, uh, compared to, for example, the Sony, just the quality the image of the screen, the Z9 blows the Sony away when it comes to the screen size and the screen quality. I'd rather have a good quality screen than the screen actually flipping all the way around. The Z8 is the best hybrid camera out right now. It's number one and the features for the price Realize that it does 8K 60, 12 bit, 10 bit, I mean, 4K 120, video features that are non existent, internal video features that are not existent in other cameras in its class. I can't wait to get my hands on one. I can't wait to put it through its paces. And for me, as a Z9 owner, okay, a lot of people online are upset that they paid $5,500 for a Z9 and you're essentially getting the same camera for a lot less. Don't be upset at this, guys, because the Z9 is its own thing. The Z9 is robust. It's got a built-in vertical grip. With the vertical grip and the ENEL 18 battery, you can have better battery life. You can have a smaller vertical grip camera. It's flush. I like to call it that word, flush. It's flush. It's built-in vertical grip. I've used cameras with vertical grips attached and uh, they don't feel the same as a camera with a unibody design like that. They just don't feel the same. You put a vertical grip on a Z7, Z7 II, it just doesn't feel right. It's not balanced like the Z9. So you are paying more for that feature. You are paying more for that, that amazing convenience of having a unibody. If you do portraits, if you do portraits a lot, uh, and, you, and you shoot vertical, the Z9 is a no-brainer. Is The Z9 sale is going to be affected because there's a Z8. Not at all, guys. Whoever wants a more robust, rugged, unibody camera, like a D4, like a D5, they're going to go for the Z9. They're not going to buy the Z8. 
So it's not going to cannibalize the Z9 sales at all because you are getting that built-in vertical grip. In my opinion, I think if you are shooting vertical grip photography, the Z9 just feels right. With the Z8 and the vertical grip, I can just tell that it's not going to be the same feeling as shooting with the Z9. Knowing that the Z8 uses EN15 batteries, does that affect the performance of the camera? Like if you're having these longer 600TC or 400TC lenses, does it affect the autofocus speed at all? People that have uh, answered that question online so far said that it's identical. It does not affect autofocus speed, tracking performance of the camera at all. So yeah, you might get less battery life, carry around a few ENEL 15 batteries and you'll be, you'll be just fine. I've always wanted two Z9s. Didn't get my second body only because I knew that something, I was waiting for the Z8 to come out and I was hoping that the Z8 would be just like what I predicted two years ago. For me, the Z8 will be accompanying my Z9 as my second body. Same sensor, like I said, same image quality, same processor, same performance. Not everyone's gonna be excited about this camera. Not everybody, it's not gonna be for you. If you already have a Z9 and you don't need a second body, then I'd say just stand pat, you know? Uh, if you do, if you're on a Z7 II right now and you were waiting for a camera that's a little less expensive than the Z9 with new tech, then this is the time to upgrade. We're going to see Z7 II bodies, Z6 II bodies online for the pickings. I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of used cameras online. You can mount the Z8 on a gimbal easily now. And it, I think it weighs 910 grams if I'm not mistaken. So it's a lot lighter than the Z8, Z9, the Z8 is. So you can attach your gimbal, all you filmmakers out there, you videographers, wedding videographers. I predict we're going to start seeing a lot of wedding videographers use the Z8 now. You know, in the past two, three years ago, uh, people would come up to me, the videographer teams, and they would say, you're using a Nikon? Now we're going to be seeing them using Nikons for video. I'm telling you, uh, this is a game changer for the industry. And I'm happy that Nikon really uh, delivered and what I was asking for at least two years ago. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you for hearing me out. Nikon Z8 is here. Pre-orders are scheduled to be sold. I think they start shipping end of the month, close to it. So we'll see a Z8 in people's hands very, very soon. All right, guys, before I end it, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers, all my viewers on Vahography. This has been a fun ride and we're just getting started. So thank you. Like I said, guys, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and join Vahography. I would love to have you here. Thank you for watching. The Nikon Z8 is here. I'm excited. Let's go rock and roll. We'll see you on the next video. This is Vahography. I'm Vahagan, your rock and roll photographer. We'll see you very soon. Stay positive, stay happy, and do your photography. Rock and roll.